Hi, and thanks for joining me. My name is Dina Cataldo, and I am the owner of Sicilian Tea Company. I'm here tonight to talk to you about iced tea. And I love talking about this subject because I feel like I have finally made progress in figuring out how to make the perfect cup of iced tea. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I would brew tea bags in a teapot over the stove, and I would let them boil. Sometimes um, they would simmer for a while, and I never really knew how long I was supposed to brew these tea bags. And by the time I remembered they were on the stove, I would find out that the water had been divided by half and that it was just a murky mess. And the only way that it was drinkable was if I added a ton of sugar, some water, some ice cubes, and some lemon. And it wasn't, you know, Awful, I thought it was good, but I have discovered the key to some perfect iced tea and I want to share it with you tonight. Why are we talking about this? We are talking about this because June is National Iced Tea Month. And Saturday, in fact, on June 10th, that was National Iced Tea Day. It's kind of like the unofficial start of summer, so it's a nice way to kind of get everything together and to figure out some really fun, unique things to bring to your neighborhood shindigs. And you can't see this right now, but I've got a bunch of cool stuff to share with you tonight. And I just want to like give you some tips. I'll explain to you how uh, cold brewing works, what teas it really works best with. And I will give you some, leave you with some tips and a free guide that I will link to, to give you some some things to think about in terms of playing with different spices and herbs to add some some pep to your iced tea, whatever concoction you decide you want to make. So let's talk about the tools of the trade. I use a couple things. I don't use a pot on the stove anymore. I don't use tea bags anymore. What I do use is quality loose leaf tea and I use um, a sieve and a jug. So let me show you a couple different options that you can use. You probably have some of them around the house right now. So a nice classic container that I like is just this nice Sterilite. It doesn't have any sieve connected to it, but it holds a lot of water, right? And then another tool that I will link to is this mist uh, iced tea jug. And what it has that the other jug does not is this lovely little sieve. So when I talk to you about brewing your tea, it's gonna, the tea is gonna make its way through the sieve and you don't have any mess. So let's talk a little bit about what I use when I'm using a tea jug like this. So first off, when I'm making iced tea, I pick out some good loose leaf tea. My favorite right now for iced tea is Lucia, and I've hand blended Lucia. It is a mixture of black teas, uh, whole and partial leaf, as well as peppermint and licorice root. And licorice root is used as a natural sweetener, so it's sweet tea without the sugar. It doesn't taste like licorice root like you would think for black licorice. It just sweetens everything really nicely. And here's a look at it. I put about three tablespoons of this uh, Lucia into uh, a jug like this. I put the tea inside of the mug or this jug this morning, poured a bunch of water in it, and then I put it in the refrigerator. And when I came home, it was delicious. So it's, you know, it only takes a couple hours or actually you can see the color from the leaves seeping into the water after maybe 15 minutes, but it only takes maybe an hour to start getting that flavor from all the peppermint and the licorice root coming into the water. So by the time I got home, eight, nine hours later, I found that I had a nice tasty drink. One of the things I love about cold brewing tea is that you don't have to worry about the murky mess, having to worry about how long do you brew it or, you know, am I putting too much tea into the water? All it does, all the water does is take out the natural oils and then when you drink it all, you can put more water to create more tea. It doesn't cook the leaves like steeping the leaves in hot water does, so you don't get that astringent or that bitter taste that you may get from brewing tea on the stove. So you're getting this really all nice natural flavor without the bitterness and it lasts a long time. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is, like, you can brew this up to, to three times, by the way. So one of the things I like to do with any of these uh, teas is just add for a little pep, 
You can add a little lemon. You don't have to add any sugar if you're using something that's naturally sweetened like Lucia or anything else um, that you can find that's on the market. This is something that is totally natural, totally healthy, and you add a little bit of lemon in there and you get a little vitamin C. So let's talk a little bit about how I, like I steep this, I steep the tea, and then I put my favorite brewing mug sieve into the cup. And then what I do is I just pour the tea straight into my glass. And when I do that, the tea is gonna end up into my brewing mug and I take the tea and all I do is I pour the tea back into the jug. And when I do that, it gives me an opportunity later to be able to uh, pour more water into the jug and then put it back in the refrigerator and get myself another uh, bit of iced tea out of that tea. So it's really a great uh, thing to be able to do is just keep brewing your tea. You can't do that with the tea bags. A couple tips I wanna leave you with just to refresh your own tea, no matter what loose leaf tea you use when you're cold brewing tea, if you're just using straight up black tea, you're able to create your own um, pep to your tea uh, without having to add sweeteners. You can use things that are natural, right? So first off, you always have your standard go-to, which is your slices, which are your slices of lemon. You always wanna have these handy during the summer when you're drinking iced tea. And then some fresh peppermint. I got this from my garden. And you just muddle it. You can use a spoon to muddle it, which is just squishing the leaves until the oils start to be released. And when you can start to smell the oils, the peppermint oils, then you know that you are done. And you can do that with a muddler. If you have a cocktail muddler, that is something that would make it super easy. And just pour your iced tea right over it. You can do the same thing, muddling basil. You can also do things like adding uh, oranges. Uh, you can, if you're not even into iced tea, you can create something that's really delicious if you use natural ingredients like orange slices or cucumbers or strawberries, anything like that. If you want berries, you can put them into the water and the water takes on the flavor of those different fruits. So something to consider when you are trying to make something that is unique for that you know, neighborhood shindig that you have going on this summer. So I hope you took something away that you liked from this video. What I'd like you to do is to comment with your own tip. Just write in the comments below something that you do that's traditional for you, that you love about iced tea. So when you do that, I also want you to check out a couple comments down there. And what I'm going to leave you with is a link to a free guide, which is a guide about, um, a guide about tea blending and it's going to give you some ideas, some recipes to maybe add a little bit of pep to your own iced tea creation. I'll also leave you some links to the different items that I talked about today. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a wonderful night.